Hi, this is 365821 and I'm a BL manga collector. I make videos about my collection and I review the manga that I've read. Many people have been very kind about my collection and have commented on how extensive it is. But, as every good UK knows, something that big in size can cause a few problems. Yes, I'm talking about duplication. Now even someone such as myself, whose main hobby, nay, existence, revolves around collecting BL manga, can come a cropper to this phenomenon. All it takes is a bargain on Amazon, a bundle lot on eBay, or a discount code for Wordery, and there you have it, duplicates. No publisher, nor imprint, no trim size, nor format, no old or new is immune to this affliction. So today's video is how I've kept track of my burgeoning collection. Now I have in the past tried to use apps such as Bookcrawler, but I didn't like the fact that uh, there was a limited number of books that you could input on the free version and then you had to upgrade into the paid version. I did like the fact that you could scan the books, um, that was very useful, however not all of my BL could be scanned and I still often had to input them in manually anyway. Um, I know that there are perhaps better, more user-friendly apps available now, but I really just can't justify paying for an app when I've got money, I would rather spend it on more books. I did try to use Goodreads, in fact I've tried to use them a few times, and that was one of the goals for um, 2020. Um, I'm just going to be spoiling here. Uh, yeah, it's not really worked out for me, so I've decided to go with something a little bit better, something a little bit more appropriate for me, that's tailored to me, and that is my spreadsheets. Now, as you can see, this is a zoomed out view of my Google Sheets. Um, it's a spreadsheet for all of the BL manga purchases I have made, and it usually keeps track of everything. So if we just zoom in to 100%, you'll be able to see everything a bit better. So I've got everything divided up into their different columns, the title, then I've got author, publisher, um, the year, which I try to include the month as well, the quantity, which is obviously what I try to avoid having more than one, my ISBN numbers, the cost, um, the purchase, i.e. where I purchased it, how I purchased it, if there was a deal when I purchased it, and then red, but just ignore red at the, at the end. Now, I usually try to default keeping it in alphabetical order, by title and so due to punctuation but I'm your teacher is the first one on the list um, and as we go down you can see it's all of the ones that start with the letter A. You can also see that there are different colours and I'll go through all of the different colours but the colour coding is something that I find really um, important and uh, useful visually for me to keep track of all of the different titles and which ones I need to get or which ones I have completed already. They each uh, represent a different category. So if we just go through the colours, orange is a complete incomplete series, i.e. I have everything of it that was published in English at least so far. Blue is for single volume Yaoi novels and purple is for Yaoi novel series that I have yet to complete. So I know Kusabi um, is a big one and all you need is love, I need volume one for that. Green is an incomplete manga series or that is still ongoing and yellow is a complete series. I have everything! <laughs> And white is for one-shot volumes of manga. Now I've just ordered um, Publisher by alphabetical order and because title was previously alphabetical it means that all of the titles are ordered alphabetically by Publisher. So that makes it really easy for me to see which titles I have for each of the different publishers. So uh, for some reason Z Volume 1 is always at the top. It never stays with the rest of the Zs. I don't know. I don't understand why. <laughs> but anyway, so you can see all of the 801 media titles. These are all the ones I have and all of the different colour coding um, 
that kind of helps me to see which series I have completed, how many single one shots I've got. For some reason Devil's Secret is in purple. I don't know why I did that. I highlighted it for some reason. And I don't sh I'm not sure if I have two copies of it. Anyway. Um, so yeah, you can see Zet is one of the big titles that were a little bit tricky to get hold of. Some of the volumes, volume 2, 5 and 6 are the three that I'm missing for Zet. So um, once I have them, I will have the complete set. The other one that is in green, because everything else, hey class president, I have everything that's available at the moment, although there is more in Japanese. Um, Love is like a hurricane. I think I need to complete that one. Um, I just have volume one to get. I already have volume four and five. So I need to put them into this spreadsheet so that I have it updated. Now, usually when I am inputting details, I have a stack of manga in front of me that have come from a manga haul. So I just usually make sure that I have um, the spreadsheet A to Z'd and then I just scroll down. Now, as I'm scrolling, I can just see all of the different colours and if I see any greens, that usually means those are the ones that I need to complete. Now, when I have uh, one, I've got the Earthian in front of me. I usually try and make sure that the books are there in front of me so that I can check through them and I can see which ones I need to input and which ones I already have. So going over to the spreadsheet, I can then make sure that I put in the correct number of rows and I can start trying to put in the details. Now I know I've got Earthian Volume 1 and 2 already. In fact, I have two copies of Volume 1. Um, and so I'm just going to put in Volume 3 and 4. Now, when you've already got the author's name, it very kindly comes up already. So that um, reduces the amount of time that you need to put in. And the same goes for the publisher as well. Now, it comes for the year. The best way to find that is to look in the book itself. Usually they have that information published. Um, if you know it already, that's great. Scroll through all the adverts at the back, which I really enjoy looking at. And you can see the ISBN number, as well as the month and the year it was published. I usually try to put in the month, um, because sometimes within a title you get uh, two volumes of a series published in the same year. So, yep, just checking through Earthian, through the adverts in the back, and seeing the ISBN number, as well as the... Uh, date for the month and the year it was published. Now heading back over to the spreadsheet I now have that information so it doesn't take me very long to be able to put in that um, information into the spreadsheet. Like I said I try to have the month and the year just because there are so many published these days <laughs> um, in certain years and also it means I can uh, look through the spreadsheet by year and then order which ones are the actually oldest titles I have in my collection and the youngest titles as well. So the newest and the oldest is quite nice. Um, ISBN numbers <laughs> may be a little bit of overkill, but I do find them useful as well. Um, most ISBN starts with uh, 9781 for the English language version. So sometimes if you find a book that you think you might want and it's 9783, that means it's not in English. So that's a really good thing. If you've written as many ISBN numbers as I have, then you will know that if it has a 1 in it, it means it's in English. If it's got a 3 after the 8, then it's not in English. Don't get it. It's probably German or French. Um, yeah, I usually put in the cost as well. So here you can see I originally put in 18 because I think that's how much the set was um, but each uh, individual uh, Volume was only four pounds fifty. I think that's a really good bargain because I've seen just volume three or just volume four go For 18 pounds and don't forget to also increase the quantity <laughs> So now I have three volumes of vo volume one. Um, I don't know why <laughs> But uh, that's just what happens. You need to make sure that you keep a track of that so I can get rid of those extra volumes. Now here I've highlighted them all and I've changed it to yellow and it feels so good to be able to put that into yellow. Now the next title I'm going to be doing is Rough Love. So once I've done one I can scroll down further into the spreadsheet and I do like scrolling. It kind of gives me a chance to see everything and evaluate what I need to fill in and also see any gaps. 
of course the ones that I need to get. It also just makes me feel good to know that all of the ones that are in yellow or orange um, I've already collected so it gives me a sense of relief. I don't need to stress about things. So yeah, here I've got to R, which means I need to find the RU, and there I can see that there is Ruderville, Volume 1 and 2, and Rush, Issue 0. So I know that I'm going to have to put another row in between these two titles and make sure that I reset the colour to white, because this is a one-shot. And I need to make sure that I have all of them properly colour-coded. That's one thing I'm always very sure of. So, Rough Love. I can put that in and also the author's information. I already have some of her titles so it was easy to put in and this was a due title. Now I need to put in the year and unfortunately when it comes to due titles they have the ISBN numbers there but they don't always have um, a lot of information in their publishing page. They have the year it was published, but they don't ever put the month it was published. So for this, I need to go on a bit of detective hunt. I can put in the 2008 for just now, but which month was it published in? So for me, I'll just go to somewhere like Amazon and try and find the information from their pages. So I'll scroll down after searching for that author here it is, and I found it. Now there's two dates on this one, so I'm just going to click on it just to make sure. And it tells me it was in August 2008, so quite a long time ago. Quantity, ISBN number, the usual. I just put in everything. Now when you've got a volume that's part of a series that you know where it is in the spreadsheet, you don't necessarily need to scroll up and down. You can just search for it. So I would just go onto my spreadsheet and I would put in... Um, the details, so for example the title, and I'll be able to find Embracing Love, there it is. Now I've obviously got the Be Beautiful one as well as the two Sublimes, so I know that this is a Sublime one that goes in between Volumes 1 and 2 and Volumes 5 and 6, so I can quickly and easily find it and put in the details. And of course, the usual Yokonitas one that I have quite a few of, and Sublime I have quite a few of, so it's quite easy for me to Put that information in. Once again I will highlight it because it is green but this time instead of yellow I will go for orange and that means I have everything that has been published in English although it's not completely published. And Embracing Love Volume 1 for Be Beautiful still green because I still need to get some more of those. They are incomplete at the moment. Now I found my spreadsheet really easy to navigate because I've made it myself, I've designed it for me, so I find it really simple. Um, I know the colour system that I'm using, so I know um, how everything works. You might want to do something differently if you're going to try and use a spreadsheet as well. Um, the positives are that it is very visual and it's a number so I can see at a glance um, how many titles I've got. Um, I actually have more than what I have on this um, screen grab. After I did this, I actually just sat down and um, blitzed it. I went through everything and I inputted all the, the sections that are missing because I know that there's a few things like dates, um, quantities, um, ISBN numbers, things like that. I just went straight into it and just got it all done. So it's nice to be able to keep track of the number I've got, but also um, which ones I'm missing. And so at the moment when I'm at the point where I'm starting to really pinpoint the missing titles and trying to plug the gaps in my collection, this becomes really useful. I know, oh, that's green. There's still something I need to get for that. That one's orange. I've got everything that's available. That one's yellow. That's complete and I can feel a sense of satisfaction from things being yellow rather than green. Now there's also the um, fact that I can order by author and that means I can check to see if I've got everything by an author um, or if I want to have a day when I just read that author's work I can check all of the titles that I have for them. Um, like I said I can order by publisher so I can see if I've got everything from the publisher or not and also I can order by the oldest to the newest. I can also check my quantities so if I've got more than one I can see if I want to sell these off. I haven't actually ever sold any so I'm going to have to have a big clear out and get rid of all of my duplicates. This is kind of the point of this 
spreadsheet to stop me from having duplicates. So um, yeah, I'm hoping to get that done one day. <laughs> Um, the ISBN numbers, as I said, it might be a bit overkill, but I do find it quite useful. Um, the cost as well, I remember having a conversation on Twitter with someone who was also talking about their spreadsheet and um, they didn't put in the cost. They said they didn't want to see that. I can kind of understand why, but for me, because I'm trying to create this collection, but without spending a fortune, I do think it's important that I keep track of this, um, how much I'm spending on each of these volumes, especially out of print ones. I don't want to go crazy and spend a lot of money on them. Um, so yeah, the one downside, there's definitely pros and cons to using this system. And uh, one is that I didn't upkeep with the red column. I really wanted to put in like a date that I read it so that I knew that I had read everything so that this didn't become just one big long TBR <laughs> because sometimes that's what it feels like when I'm scrolling up and down um, and I know that I've read things and completely forgotten about what what the story was so to be able to see yeah I have read it would be really good so I really should have kept that um, kept up with that and made sure I did um, but yeah so there's pros and cons to all of these um, different measures I know that there's another um, Twitter account that have the forum and they um, are trying to set up a big BL um, master list and so that might be worth checking out as well. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this, I hope you found this interesting. If you've got any questions about um, what's in my collection or um, how I do this spreadsheet, let me know. Um, thanks for watching, I'll see you next one. Bye!